Hello, this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today with another fun fold card. I found it on a YouTube channel called Coast to Coast Girls. And the lady who created this card, she found a way to make a really difficult fun fold very easy to create. So I'm going to link to her video below and I've taken on her um, way of creating it. Uh, not necessarily with the same measurements because I can't remember exactly the measurements she did use. They might have been the same or not. What you need for this, I've got a little note here at the side, is you need two panels that are seven by seven inches. Sorry, seven by five inches. You can obviously create this uh, with a different, with different measurements, make a smaller card, but that's the one I'm using. And you can see I've already die cut um, a frame out of this. When you use a frame, I don't think really it matters what size the frame is or what uh, shape. I think you can have all sorts of shapes. But I like mine, uh, when I bought these, I made sure they are suitable for 5 by 7 cards because sometimes you get American measurements and if you want to make British measurements or a card with British measurements, then these leave a wider frame like on the top than they do on the side. Sorry, top and bottom than they do on the sides. So this one cut evenly. And when I die cut this, uh, as a little tip, I always make sure that I have my, let me just pop this back in, that I put my tape just on the inside here. So I would stick it down like this and there. Reason being is, um, especially with smooth cardstock like this one, and I do actually have a little uh, blemish there, I find that the tape always leaves a mark as well. I can see where the tape was. So at least I have it on this bit that I'm di disposing of or definitely not using in this project. Um, and the other thing I do on top of this, I put a piece of uh, copy paper. This is just a scrap from another project. I just put that on top. So none of the marks on my, except for this one, obviously one of none of the marks uh, from my top cutting plate, which I normally don't cut into, uh, ends up on here. But there might be some residue on it or some something left over. Yeah, I've got something there. So sometimes it's just a little thing that then leaves a mark. Or if you've done some fiddly die cutting, uh, some of the bits might have been stuck to your plate and then that shows. But um, I did this all off camera. Uh, to keep this video short but I wanted to show you this is now fairly flimsy I don't know what weight this cardstock is I bought that in my local craft shop but I like the sort of matte uh, shimmer look to it but I wanted to show you how you can die cut the same frame again in the same place so I've cut another piece here from black cardstock uh, this is also five by seven, so I would align this here, making sure it's properly aligned. Then I would place my, no, I don't need my frame just yet, sorry about that. So because it's black cardstock, I'm using a white um, pastel pen, you can use a gel pen. And rather than marking it straight on uh, the edge here, because I know I won't be able to see this, I'm marking this a little bit further away from the frame. Let me just zoom in and show you how I'm doing this. But this distance here, I'm doing it all the way around. So having the same distance. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it. But this means when I take this away, that's probably a little bit further there. But this means when I'm aligning this now, I know I need to have the same distance now zoom out again on all these four lines and then this gives me uh, hopefully the same distance another way of doing it if you don't want to measure that precisely is having this piece bigger die cutting uh, the frame out and then cutting around the edge but I can just place this on here again checking that and I can see now that it's very even 
around the edges there can you see what I don't like doing is which some crafters do is cutting through both pieces of cardstock at the same time I've tried it and for some cardstock it's okay but it basically means you've got an extra shim and then you're more likely to have blemishes on cardstock like that so this is why I like to do it this way so um I'll show you the other bits in a moment. I just quickly die cut this. So I can see now it's not a perfect fit, but it's okay. And remember also this is this is the back of it now because we measured it from this side. So, but it doesn't matter. I will glue it down like this now. I'm just using my magic glue as usual. Any glue is fine. I have found that some of them are drying up a little bit, but otherwise it's my favorite glue sorry about that i've just got to, to clean that up so if you cut this frame from a sturdier cardstock you might not need a second layer but i found because i cut we cut into it we don't have the stability sorry for going off camera a little bit oh and there's the postman bear with me so luckily that only took just uh, under two minutes because obviously my glue is drying here so hoping that still works and I'm hoping I haven't turned this upside down now I might have done never mind I'm going for it now so I'm pressing it down with my bone folder so that it adheres nicely i'm a bit out i can see that there but it doesn't matter yeah it looks okay from this side i've got a bit of an edge there which i can cut off once it has dried so um yeah i'm just showing you the other things that i have cut I have cut three panels. I was looking for a matching cardstock here that would go well with a green and I have got this matte mirror card. I'll just show you the packaging. I find that that is quite readily available on very, uh, quite a few sites online but I got it from my local craft shop. It's the Dovecraft Mermaid and Unicorn card pack and it's got one of each of these colours and I find they're really, really pretty colours. And the reason why, another reason why I went for the pink is for my embellishment, I have taken one of the Lavinia Stamps postcards and I have cut this image out. And you maybe have already seen this here. The other bit that was here, I just cut a little triangle off to put on my sentiment panel later. I'll tell you about this in a moment. So, as far as I understand the card, although I haven't built it yet, I think the whatever topper you have should not be wider than the frame. I, have, I wanted to say I've fussy cut it, but I haven't really. I just cut round the image. Oh, another little tip there is once you've cut this, I went round with my bone folder and pressed the edges down. And then I find you've got a much neater look. If you ever have little bits, you could go in with your um, nail file. But I just press this down like this. So I will have to test before I glue this down whether this is too wide. And I just need to chop off just a little bit there. But we'll see. So for the actual mechanism, I have cut a piece. And that's the same black cardstock here. And this is, I think, only 160 GSM. It doesn't have to be super heavy because we're only building um, the um, inside mechanism from this. And this is eight and a half inches by seven inches. And I need to score this now. I'll just get all this out of the way. This is my new scoreboard. I haven't got a space yet, so it's sitting on the floor at the moment next to my desk. So, and this is from Creative Craft Products, by the way. I'm still testing this, but I'm very happy how sturdy it is. 
but I haven't tested it yet for the gatefold cards because this is ma the main reason why I got one. So we need to score this at every other inch. So at two inches, four inches, six inches and eight inches. So, and then these all become, well, whichever way you want to see it, mountain folds or valley folds. I've got a bit of glue there. That is because I dipped my frame in there when the postman rang. So I need to be mindful it's not the thickest of cardstock, so it must be mindful not to press too hard I think this one might be from the works but I don't know so and the last one's also valley fold or mountain fold as I said whichever way you look at so this is a flap so what I'm doing is I'm cutting just a teeny bit of a wedge off So, and then I'm folding this on the first, sorry, on the second score line, whichever way you want to see it. So I've got the half inch flap here, sorry, because it's black card, so it's difficult to see. And then I folded it on this one. I am applying some glue on the flap here. I could use um, a tape because it's very thin cardstock. And sometimes with the liquid glue, um, it gets a bit wobbly, knobbly, but I think it'll be fine. And then I'm folding this one over here, pressing it down. So, and then I'm opening it up and I've got basically this tube. So, and I'm leaving that to dry for a moment before... I use that to assemble the card. On my frame, where the back frame's gone a bit off, I will now just cut off the excess a little bit here. It sticks out a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much. I've also got a bit on the top. I'm deliberately not taking my trimmer because I always struggle with that. If I don't align it properly, I'm making it worse than it is. That'll do. Some of that will be hidden anyway. So I'm marking the halfway point on the back here now. I need to just move that tab. I've just cut wonkily. So I'm just aligning it on here and I'm just marking it on the side of the midpoint because this is where I need to apply glue. So I'm applying glue just on the side here and I'm deliberately using the one now that's got more white exposed because then that will be hidden. And I think this time I just use the Cosmic Shimmer glue. I think that's a bit better for grabbing. Now that's the bottle that's still clogged so that's a problem with having two on the go. Um, I keep forgetting to unclog that one. Then again, I should be using this up first anyway. So I'm trying not to get too close to the edge because I'm sure that will ooze out. If you want to do, you can use a spatula or something to spread this out a little bit. I just go for it as always. So I need to show you this. My friend Rebecca gave me that. It's actually a coffee cup, but it's great for keeping my glue upside down. So, and now I've got the flap here on the corner. I folded this flap flat. And now I'm going to, making sure I'm doing it the right way. Ooh. Bear with me, I don't want to do this wrong. So, the flap, flap is here. 
No, I'm keeping the flap flap here in the middle. Yeah, so this is what I'm gluing on. So I'm folded this flat. Oops. And now I'm aligning the frame on here like so, making sure it's straight. If you want to use like a collal glue that allows you to wriggle it a little bit, you can do that. So I'm pressing this down. I tell you what I've done wrong. Shouldn't have gone halfway point, should just have gone for two inches because this is the width of this. Mm. I'm not too bothered about this because this will actually be covered, but I will have to cover the frame on the inside as well. Okay, so I will put a disclaimer in the video, so ignore my um, instructions there for the halfway. It's not halfway, it's just two inches in, but never mind. It comes from not practicing this card beforehand. So... I will. I think I will just leave that to dry. I try to take a bit of that glue off before it's drying completely, just so it doesn't ruin the project. And then I'll show you how we glue down the back. Okay, so I have cut just a scrap here, and I've cut uh, my frame out of this again. And this is, as I said, as I said earlier, the other way of doing this. So I'm going to align the frame here now, and I can mark. On the outside where I need to cut off so I'm just line across there line across there just a bit surprised this is a bit too short on that side as well uh, one of those crafty things never mind I'm not bothering about that now because it should have been a bit wider but I didn't align the die properly so I now know where to trim and I quickly do this off camera and then glue it onto the inside. I think today is one of those tutorials where nothing really goes to plan. But anyway, this worked okay. I popped the frame on there. I just wanted to show you, I obviously didn't cut on the white line. I cut a little bit further away. So that fitted perfectly. It's not a problem, but it's only when I opened up that I realised the idea was to put one of those pink panels onto the black card before I cut it. But it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you want to have some fancy pattern paper, you should do that. So in my project, I only need two of these now. So these two pink panels, they will go onto um, the two uh, panels here. If you wanted to, you could do some fancy matting and layering. I didn't really want to do anything fancy. Only thing I wanted to do is cover these panels. I'm just contemplating whether I want to cut them a little bit shorter and leave a little bit of a wide frame. I think I will do that. So rather than having them two by seven inches, I will have them one and seven eighths by uh, six and seven eighths so i will just cut two of these down just to have a tiny bit of a frame and then this green panel that one goes on the back so i will place mine down this way so that i've got the white on the back and the green on the inside but it's up to you it's up to you whether you want something double-sided this allows me if i wanted to to have something you know, another sentiment on the back, although I have created a little panel here to go on the inside. And I think this again, oh no, that's fine. I've cut that correctly. This was actually a scrap I had. So this, in theory, because this is two inches wide, should be just under three inches. Uh, like, I think this is two and three quarters. Let me just check. Yeah, two and three quarters by six and three quarters and then as I said before I've got this little corner so that will just go on here and then I've got this space for the sentiment so I do the glowing down off camera here uh, leave that to dry for a moment and then I'll show you how I show you how I attach the embellishments so I just realized um, for the mechanism of the card 
this image doesn't really work. It's okay to glue it down, but you only get the full effect if you actually have a taller image. So if you want to use something small like this, maybe create a smaller card, maybe a, a square card. And I've also realized that uh, the back here would be exposed. So putting the white panel here doesn't quite work. So I could have put the cutoff bit here on the back, but I just dismissed the idea. I'm going to use that for a different project. And I just had a look through my stash because if you haven't watched that video, I'm currently de-stashing, looking through my stash. And I found these pre-cut, well, by me, pre-cut uh, coloured heat embossed flowers. And they're a bit flimsy though. So I just dug out the dies and they are stuck mostly still on this jig here I created. One of my very first videos is about how you can economise uh, stamping and die cutting and I think even stenciling, I can't remember. So you might want to check that video out. If I remember, I'm going to link to it below. This is from the um, Lisa Horton Paper Craft Society box. Does it have a number? Number 33. So you might have this set. And it's one of the sets I will definitely keep because I really like the look of these flowers and they are really versatile. So what I will do is I just cut another backing for these, glue these together. And because these are such bold colours, I think I will just come in with my Kuritake pens and just give them these a little bit more colour so that they don't, well, they look as if they're part of it. Um, or I might use uh, my inks again. I can't remember which inks I used for these. So I'll have a think about it, but they will definitely get a bit more colour. And then I'll show you, once I've got the pieces, I'll show you how to glue them down and create this look on the front of the card that I originally wanted. So I'm just popping in to show you how I colour these in with my Kuritake pens. I've just got two colours here. I've got the number 25, which is pink, and 21, which is light carmine. And I literally just put some ink down. Obviously, it blends in with the colour underneath. I made sure where I had some white edges um, that I coloured that in as well, where I hadn't die cut it properly or whether it left a, an edge. And then I just went over with a second colour really, really randomly. I just wanted a bit of a bolder colour. And now I'm coming in with my um, Spectrum Rightly overlay. Last time I looked for that online, I couldn't find it anymore, but uh, Wink of Stella is the same thing. So, and then I'm just going all over, blending that in to get some more ink on it. And then I'm just, after I've finished the whole lot, I will just take the ink off there. And then I've got a nicely colored, you've got just got a hint of a blend there. As I said, I'm really not bothered, but I need to leave these to dry, especially after using this here before I stick them onto the bases. And I will do the same with the leaves. We'll just add two colors. And as I said, color in the edge here as well. And before I forget to mention that, for my card base, where I stuck down this panel here, sorry, these panels here and this card base, for this here, I just used some uh, double-sided adhesive tape because so much has gone wrong already. Well, not wrong, but not as planned. And I didn't want this to show any uh, glue. Sometimes I find if I use wet glue on some mirror card, it shows. And this, because it's a smooth surface, I decided to use the red tape just behind there. So I put the red tape on the black panel and, yeah, uh, let me just think which way around I did it. Yeah, I put the green card base on the table and then just lay this down on here. And that is sort of straight. I'm happy with it anyway. So I thought I mentioned that before. I forget about that. OK, I think my die cuts have dried sufficiently. They're still a bit damp, but it's definitely enough to glue it, glue them down. Um, before I forget to mention that, I just want to show you the two greens I used. As I said, it doesn't really matter. Number 47 and number 41 for the leaves. So, and the important thing 
for the embellishments on the front is this you fold this flat but you need to make sure that when you glue your embellishment down and I really like the look of this big one is that the embellishment on the right hand side does not block this frame because that pops up so you don't want it underneath or over it you just want it inside on this side it doesn't matter but you don't want it to go further obviously than the card here but we will only glue it down on this panel here that is pink so I need to make a little bit of a mental note where I need to put the glue down so I don't want any glue I'm we'll just grab a pencil from my pile here sorry about the noise so I only want glue. I actually want to make sure that the stem is fully on the card because it's so thin. So I only want glue up to here. I'm going to put a mark on there. Just above where I've got that there. And then I don't want any glue on this little tip. So I will just mark that there. So that basically... I'm omitting this here so and I've also got this little bit here this one I will just stick on here just just on the frame I think that will be a nice look because when the card pops up and you open it up oops shouldn't do it there should open it like this then this will sit on the front but this will sit on here that's the idea behind it you could also if you wanted to create this card you could also put a full panel on here that pops out i think i have created something like that in the past but uh, the um, die cutting was very complicated so i will use my quick grab glue again i think it'll be fine on the mirror card so just making sure nope I nearly put it on the wrong side <laughs> it's one of those brain fog mornings well it's lunch after lunch now you know when you think like oh just create a card quickly in about half an hour and an hour and a half just later you're still here and that's up to there and just there so I'm spreading this just out a little bit so it doesn't ooze out anywhere I've got a bit of a height difference there because the flower itself I could actually put it on foam but it would just be that bit anyway so I'm not bothered um yeah the die cut piece for the stem um just has to sit under there so placing this on here I've done it wrong now yes because I have put glue on the plants there ah. Hmm, tell you what, it's one of those days, isn't it? Mm. Let me just put some scrap paper there. I'm going to place this down here now as planned. And then everything that hangs over here, I can die cut another piece after that and cover that. I don't want this to ruin the panel. So I'm just checking that the flower is okay. Just take that away. So the flower is okay, but I should not have put any glue on those leaves. But never mind. I will leave this to sit open for a while whilst this is drying. Because I don't want that now, that glue, to end up on that panel. So I will move this out of the way as well. And then on the inside... I will just glue down, I'm just picking the leaf, I thought the flower at the top here, and I stamped and die cut this make a wish. Part of that will show, the edge will show, but I think when you open it, it looks really nice. I will dispose of these two bits now. These can be used as layering pieces, but I don't really want the layers on here. And this one can be used in connection with the little flower here. But I just stick with a small bud here and these will definitely go in the bin now. I just want to tell you about these whilst I've got the camera running. I don't know if I've used them in a video before. 
I very recently bought these on Amazon and I'm going to link to them below. I'm really happy with these. For quite a while I wanted some uh, birthday sentiments that have got dyes with them um, because I really like the look of that. So I got these. I wasn't quite sure how big they would be and whether they would be any good, but I really like them. So this is how I cut the Make a Wish. And I uh, heat embossed that in gold to go with the gold embossing on these bits here. And for the front, uh, this comes with just the rectangle die. Uh, I um, heat embossed the birthday, which is that was when I was still thinking I would use the other embellishments. But I just want to show you something. The die leaves a little bit of an edge. I don't know if you can see that. If you ever have that, use your bone folder and you can soften that a little bit. Try not to go over the embossing too much, but you can press it down a little bit and then it's not as obvious. Still there, but I think it'll be fine. And this goes on the outside of the frame here. But as I said, I leave this to dry. I will glue these down all off camera. I will also get my daily chores done, which is clean the pub. And then I think I just need to show you the finished card at the end. So my card is almost finished. I will show you one trick in a moment. But I've got the lovely flowers here in the front. And then when the recipient opens it up, you can sit like this on the desk or oh, well, whatever mental piece. And then you've got this display. I could have put something here, but I think I'll leave it now. The colours are quite bold. If you've got pattern cardstock, that obviously will make a statement as well. And I don't really want this to take away from the overall look. But I've just noticed where I've got these leaves here. They're a bit wonky. Oh, by the way, to show you this from the back. So I just die cut another um, leaf stem there. I just cut these pieces and just covered the glue in the back. But I just want to show you a little trick how to get some glue behind here because I think... I need a drop off glue there. Let me just zoom in because it is a bit unstable. So I've just got some scrap of cardstock here. Actually, I will cut it because this is quite an absorbent cardstock. And I will just put a lot, sorry, a spot of glue on here. Don't really want too much, just on the corner there. And now I can slide this underneath the die cut piece, apply the glue, take this out again and then press this down and then I only have the glue where I want it. And I find that's a useful trip, uh, tip if you don't want to you know, bend pieces up and you just need a little bit of more glue. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this card now. In hindsight, if I'd known I would choose these die cut pieces, I might have chosen a slightly subtler uh, cardstock, but I actually quite like the bold look and I really like the pink with the green. Yeah, and I'm really pleased with this now, in spite of all the hiccups. Oh, I forgot to mention that. The uh, sentiment here at the bottom, I put that on foam t uh, tape, but I left a little bit of gap in the foam for this flower piece can you see so that that um, sits on nicely so yeah I'm really pleased with this and if you like this card too you might want to give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating you might want to subscribe to my channel I'd be very happy about that and I'll see you soon with another video I'm just popping in again to show you another card I made last night with the same sort of mechanism, but I'll show you a few differences. Uh, I made this um, last night because a gentleman who comes to our pub commissioned two cards with me. I normally don't take commissions, but this gentleman, he always gives generously to the local lifeboat. So I said, well, if you put some money in the donation tin, I will make two cards. And this was an idea I had sort of whilst making the other card um, as to see whether I can create apertures with different dies. And I had the idea to create this star shape because all I knew about this was the girl's name and she's turning 13. So I had to think what I could create. And so I used this star shape, 
but because it is this funny shape when it opens up you need to make sure that the star in the middle fits through it so I ended up making this bit here half of this card this, this is a six by six card so this is three inches wide so uh, that's important if you want to fold a funny shape like that I think with a circle you might not have the problem uh, with a heart you probably will be um, this by the way this is a star nesting die set if I can find it where I've ordered it from I'm going to link to it so I chose for the middle bit I chose the one size down I didn't want anything to catch and because this is a um, three inch wide panel here I needed to have theoretically 12 and a half inches obviously the pattern cardstock is only 12 inches so I created a little flap here in the background and I will uh, enclose some footage here where I've filmed that so you could briefly see how I attach these two together in hindsight maybe I should have put that flap somewhere to the side maybe here because you can see it when the card is standing up but it's not too bad because it's patterned paper anyway so yeah I think that's the important thing if you change the aperture if you have the rectangle or square or whatever it doesn't really matter that much yeah for those letters and the number I picked some double-sided not double-sided some adhesive glitter paper I'm going to link to that below I recently bought another lot it comes in a pack uh, with the white and the black and it's non shed glitter and it's great for die cutting because you can just stick it down I've used uh, another sentiment here from that new stamp set and also this one here I really like sorry stamp and die set I really like the look of that and I just die cut another little star to go on the inside so there is um, the gentleman can write his notes on there or even on the back I had to put this on the back because I kept for forgot again or I thought I'd get away with it it's the shiny cardstock again and that shows liquid glue so uh, for the front this panel actually I stuck it down with some double-sided adhesive yeah and I think this is really good and I really like this one I thought when I was 13 if I had received that I'd be really really happy and obviously it stands up like that so yeah I thought I'd just show you that one and for the other card I've been asked to um, create I will either create a new one and put a video up or I choose one of my old tutorials I'll have a think about that in the meantime